Let me just speak from the heart, speak from my gut, and really not have anything prepared, but just tell you what's worked for me. And maybe some of the stuff that's worked for me might work for you now, currently, presently, as you guys have your goals and ambitions, NBA championship, MVPs in this room, things like that. But then further on down the line, as you guys continue to live your life. The first thing I just want to say is this idea and this notion that you could be anything you want, you can accomplish anything you want, right? We hear that. You've heard that from the time you were little boys. You hear that now. You're already incredibly accomplished. You can win an NBA championship, MVP of the league. You could become president. You could become governor. You could be in entertainment. You could do Charles, or you could do Shaq. You could do that. You could do whatever you want to do. You guys know that. The thing that has worked for me is to remember the hard times. So, and I'm sure you guys all have your processes. And again, I'm going to tell you what's worked for me. So before a big movie comes out, before back in the days when I was wrestling with WWE, a WrestleMania match, anything big that would happen, I would always take a moment and I'd just remind myself, all right, I was evicted when I was 14. We were kicked off the island. We couldn't live in Hawaii. Had no place to live. A lot of shit happened then when I moved to Nashville. I was arrested multiple times by the time I was 16 years old. I gotta remember that. You know, we struggled a lot. There was a lot of struggling going on. My dad was very successful in his own right. He was a professional wrestler, so he was a, a local star at that time before the business of professional wrestling became uh, global, if you will. But there was a lot of struggle, and watching them struggle and watching them pull through it and, um, and having that example. And, and also, not only in addition to that example, I think consistently being told that whatever it is that you want to do, you've got to get after it gotta get after it, there's no substitute for hard work, hard work always pays. You know, those type of mantras over time. I had no money, so I remember that. I got cut from Canada, I had seven bucks in my pocket, and I always tell that story. So now my production company is seven bucks, advertising agency is seven bucks, everything is seven bucks. So I always remember that. What helps me is to keep the hard times in the front of my mind, because it allows me to go into these big moments that I've worked my ass off, and you guys have worked your ass off, it allows me to go into these big moments with a different perspective. I knew I wanted to be something, and it was important to me to be something. It was, it was important to me that I didn't fail. But by the way, and if I did fail, at least uh, th what was also important was the lesson. And I didn't realize that until I got older, because you know, when you're in it, and you're in the grind, you don't really recognize those things uh, when you're younger, but I could recognize them now and the importance of them now. And just in terms of the drive and the determination, a, a lot of it was experience too. Get your ass kicked, you get back up, and you put the gloves back on and you swing away. It's just important to find balance, and I try and do things really that I really enjoy doing. And a lot of times, you know, it's like in life, right? Life brings like drama, and you gotta deal with this person, and then you <laughs> funk your relationship here, and all these things. You try and just kind of balance them out as best I can. I got a great team around me, by the way, who really, really helps me well and helps me, allows for me to come in and work 12 hours a day, 14 hours a day, get up at three o'clock in the morning, uh, send out an Instagram video where I'm talking to my cardio machine like a crazy maniac. So yeah, it requires a lot of people around me. I still see every opportunity that I have as like a little crack in the wall, a little scratch. And it's almost as if like every opportunity represent the scratch represents every opportunity. Therefore, the success on the other side of the scratch is the light. Scratching hard, clawing, digging, it's that mentality to really take advantage of every opportunity I have. And I was, I remember laying there in, in the ring and the referee said to me, don't listen to him. And it was crippling for me. But so then at that time, <clears throat> the powers that be thought, this isn't gonna work. And for whatever reason, people are not liking you and they're not connecting with you. And so in that moment, I, it was very defining because I asked them if I could just be myself and if I could go out there and if I can speak to the crowd and if I could just be myself and be authentic. And if I don't want to smile, I don't smile. If I want to laugh, I laugh. If I want to sing, I sing. Whatever it is, I just want to be me. Can I have that for one minute of live TV time? Powers of B at that time, Vince McMahon said, you got it. So on Raw, live TV, I grabbed a microphone and I said, I may be a lot of things, but socks isn't one of them. And uh, I said something to the effect of, basically, it's not a this thing, it's not a that thing. It's a me being myself thing. And, and before you know it, I guess the moral of the story is the importance and the power of finding your identity and being true to who you are. Even in that wild world of pro wrestling, it still applies to everyone in the room and how powerful that could be because it was a true shift and click moment. 
and I never looked back and I became fortunately the biggest draw that the business has ever seen.